This is what most beginner node trees look like, and this is how it should look like. A better result with 80% less complexity. So how do you do this? If you're a video editor or a content creator, you already know about color grading and how time consuming it actually is for someone who hasn't been spending years doing it. Many of you may love all other aspects of video editing but hate color grading. Maybe it's your shot matching, skin tones, or broken shadows or highlights that frustrates you the most. But what seems to hold a lot of editors back is how excessive and cluttered their node trees are. As someone who has been color grading professionally for five years now, I have a solution. In this video, I'm going to break down my beginner friendly workflow that creates looks that go from this to this while using only seven nodes. Later on in the video, I will also show you a more advanced workflow for you to create pro level film texture to take your footage to the next level. So stay tuned for that. All right, so let's begin with building this beginner friendly note tree. If you want to follow along with me, this footage can be found on ArcGrid if you look up the filmmaker Okos. Quick setup first. Go to your color management settings, set timeline color space to DaVinci Y Gamma Intermediate and output to Rec 709A. This takes only 30 seconds and ensures your colors look right. Now before we work with the first node, I would like to know what is your preferred color space that you like to work with on your videos? Drop a comment below, I'd love to know your process. Now after I add my seven nodes using option S on my Mac, I label them by right clicking, selecting label node, and naming them based on what I'm gonna do in them. So in my balanced node, we're using the vector scope, which is the circular display that shows color distribution. We're basically gonna use it to center our colors and remove that blue tint. Now with that said, here's the finished node tree that I will be using. You have your nodes for color space, contrast, balance, look, etc. So let's go ahead and break down each node one by one. Now this footage was shot on Sony, and if I want to get the most of this image, I want to work within the camera's correct color space. So how do I do this? I go into my effects tab, find color space transform, and drag this effect in both the IDT and ODT nodes. Now what I'm doing here is creating a working wide range to do a majority of my work. I do this because a wide range gives you more room to be creative and express yourself in your color grade. And because this footage was shot on Sony, our input color space and input gamma is gonna be Sony S Gamma 3 and S Log 3. Now to create this working wide range, I set my output color space in gamma to DaVinci Y gamut and intermediate, and do the opposite with my ODT node. But the output color space in gamma for that would be Rec 709 and Rec 709A. And this is what it looks like. Now, if you don't know what Rec 709 is, it's basically a universal language for HD video color. It allows your footage to look consistent across TVs, monitors, and online platforms. Now, if you're color grading a project that's going to be seen in theaters, congratulations for you for that, if that's the case, then your output color space is going to be P3 DCI. Now, all you need to know about DCI is that it's the standard for digital theatrical projection. But for the sake of this example, and for the bulk of your projects, we'll be working with a Rec. 709 output. Output, and Rec. 709A if you're outputting on a MacBook, which I am right now. So after creating this working color space, what you're going to do is skip the balance node for now and go right into your contrast node. Now, in order for me to balance my node, I want a better view of what my Rec. 709 colors actually look like. So for a beginner friendly workflow, we won't be using custom curves. We will instead keep it very simple. So all you do is go into your contrast slider and pivot and make the adjustments with those two. Now pivot means you'll be moving wherever the contrast is sitting. So if you want the this to be a darker image, you pivot to the right. If you want it to be brighter, to target more of your highlights, you pivot to the left. But for this example, we will be leaving the contrast around 1.4 and the pivot at around 0.563. So this is before and here's the after. Do you see that change? We just brought dimension back into the image. The rocks now have texture and her face has more depth. One node can make a massive difference in your project. But now let's fix the obvious issue. We see that this image clearly has an overwhelming blue tint to it. Now the final look will be a cooler tone, but I want to balance this image to really bring her out. So you go into your balance node here, select your vector scope, and shift your offset to the opposite direction of that blue tint, and this is what we got. Now what we see here is as close to what it actually looked like on set. 
It's perfectly balanced, our subject stands out, and the rocks surrounding her feel more natural. Pause here. Now look at your image. If you've stopped right here, you've already created a better grade than 70% of all beginners. But we're not done yet. Because the whole point of creating a cinematic look isn't to replicate real life. It's to take what we already know and enhance it. But before we move on, if you're finding this video useful, please leave a like and subscribe. It'll help make the channel grow so I can make even better videos for you guys in the future. Now to create my desired color palette, we need warmer highlights with cooler midtones and shadows. Now this is what separates a standard look from a cinematic experience. Warm highlights draw the eye to your subject, cool shadows add depth and mood. Now this is my secret sauce for every color grade that I've done to keep my clients satisfied. For this palette, here are my lift, gamma, and gain settings, as well as my adjustments in my log wheels. I decrease the low and high ranges here because much like pivot, I want more control of my highlight and shadow range. But these ranges are a great way to help resolve detect where your shadows and highlights are sitting. So in this grade, we can see the majority of my waveform is sitting within this lower range here since I lowered the exposure of my previous node. So we want to make sure that these two ranges are aware of this change. And here's the result. See how much warmer she looks now while she's still keeping her surroundings cooler? That's what makes adjusting your ranges in your log wheels all the more powerful. Moving on to my HSV node. Now what I like about Resolve's tools is that they can be used in different ways. So here's a cool trick. Now normally increasing gamma brightens your image, but if I enable HSV and disable the channels 1 and 3, gamma now controls saturation instead of brightness. Now this means I can make my colors richer without blowing the highlights. Now watch what happens. Now why do we use this approach as opposed to using the saturation slider? Because the way HSV works is that it actually controls the color intensity without affecting the luminance. So in practice, this means that if we increase the gamma and maybe lower the gain a little bit, we have an image that's rich in overall density and saturation without having any one of these elements being pushed too far. Now with this last step, we will be using Color Slice to add that final layer of deep rich film density. Now when I enable it, this is what we got. Now what I like about doing it this way is that Color Slice actually adds to the effect of the HSV node prior. It doesn't act as a replacer, more like an amplifier. So if the HSV brought out the saturation of this woman's dress, then Color Slice made it deeper. Same goes for her skin and the rocks surrounding her. And we now have a deeply rich film look that you can easily recreate in one of your videos. Mind you, not every project is going to be the same, and you will need to make any adjustments whenever necessary. So this node tree is an excellent foundation for understanding the fundamental tools that Resolve offers. But this is where it gets interesting. If you found the beginner workflow helpful, wait until you see this. This is where we go from good to pro level seamlessly. What I'm about to show you is the exact workflow I use to get paid clients. With chromatic aberration removal, film halation, and custom grain that makes my footage look like it was actually shot on film. This is going to be the difference between you just getting compliments and you actually getting hired. So to start, what is chromatic aberration? This is the result of lens that could not focus on all colors all at once. So your reds, greens, and blues hit slightly different spots, which created color rings around the edges. The old film cameras used to have this problem because it was a lens issue, not a digital one. So to create that old school film texture without it pulling us away from the subject, we need to create a power window, invert it, soften the edges, and then we apply it in the effects tab. Now these are my settings for it. So let me zoom in so you can see what's actually happening here. You can see the distortion in these areas here. Now how much you want to add to it is totally up to you, but for me, I prefer it to be present around the frame rather than the center. I also lower the exposure in my curves so we make the subject stand out even further. Now for my film blur, I adjust the H slash V ratio so we are primarily focusing on the edges of what was shot and bring the radius up a couple of points. Now this takes some digital edge away from my image, making it feel more like it was shot on film. Now if I zoom in and do before and after, this is the difference. Then I use Resolve's halation that can be found in the effects tab. Feel free to pause the video, screenshot my settings, and make any adjustments that you would like to make. For me, I want my halation to be subtle. For one, 
I'm not making a color grade meant for a warm environment, so a harsher halation wouldn't make much sense. Instead, I adjust my strength and spread of the halation so we only really see it upon close inspection as you can see right here. Now making the halation effect not so in your face is what's really going to help sell this as a cinematic look. Then finally, we apply the film grain. Now Resolve offers so many variations of grain, but for me, I like to create my own custom build. The only adjustments I really make or mess around with are my grain size, grain strength, and softness. Again, feel free to pause, take a screenshot, and use this in your own videos. So if we zoom in again, here's the before and after. And there you have it. These two variations of a no tree will make your color grading go by quicker and more effectively. At this point, there is no more second guessing. If there's any adjustments that you need to make here, you don't need to add another node doing it. So if you feel that your image is a little too dark, you can make your adjustments in your exposure. If it's too saturated or not saturated enough, you go into your HSV node. Now, if you want these exact node trees ready to go, I've packed these beginner and pro workflows as power grades that you can download right now in the description below. Simply drag and drop them into your projects and you're ready to go. Also, if you're working on a project and you don't have time to work on color grading and you would rather outsource that to a professional, then I recommend that you fill out a free booking on my website. The link is also in the description below. And for the rest of you, I hope you found this tutorial useful. And if you want to learn more about cinematic color grading, then I highly recommend that you watch this video right here.